Hey everybody, last week we have launched a new website for Flux Academy. This is a really, really cool website that I've been working on for the last two months. It turned out really, really nice and I wanna break down a few of the elements that are going on in this website um, here today. This has been quite a complex project. I've been actually working on it for about 30 hours, which is the probably the longest that I've been working on any Webflow project. And so I want to explain some of the more advanced stuff that's going on here today. It's going to be exciting. Let's rock and roll. So hey and welcome back everybody. Usually this Webflow weekly videos are coming on Monday, but today I'm publishing this on a Sunday because tomorrow we're going to have a really cool live stream about how to design website that clients pay really high prices for. And so I'm excited about that. Hope to see you tomorrow on the live stream. Um, you can find the details in the description, but let's dive into this um, website. And here's what I wanna break down with you today. So first of all, I want to show you how I did, what was the process for building this website and the style guides that I've created for it because this has been really um, complex undertaken for this website. Second of all, I want to explain how I did this grid layout. So let me show you. Here we have this repeating elements where we are, the grid of the website is visible, but as you can see, sometimes the content is not exactly aligned on the grid. And this was kind of part of the design elements, and this is repeating. Um, one more cool thing is we have this nice page transitions, which I wanna explain how I did. You can see this grid element repeating here and uh, repeating here as well. So as you can see, even though we have here four columns, we have three columns on top of that. So I wanna explain how I've accomplished this effect. Um, one more thing that I wanna share with you is, um, yeah, how we did this intro, interaction and animation, and how we did this um, infinite scroll that we have here. Multiple people asked me, how did we achieve that? So let's get started and cover all of these things right now. So let's start with the style guide. So I usually, when I start building a website, I usually create the style guide. And the style guide is a page in my website that basically contains all the typographic and layout elements that I might have for the website. So you, as you can see here, we have the H1, we have H2, we have basically all the types of titles and the white titles that we have. We have the normal text, we have all the brand colors. And now the reason that I do this is that later on, first of all, I can use this to build. I can use this to copy paste um, most of the elements. And once I have them here, it's very easy to globally change them. If I need to change a color, if I need to change globally on the whole website, the way that a certain title looks like. Now, usually I put here also design elements that are repeating themselves. Now in this website, I've tried to build most of the components that are going to be repeating. So as I've mentioned, this grid layout, this and this grid layout has kind of sometimes two columns, sometimes it has three columns, sometimes those are three columns in the grid and sometimes three columns in a flex box and I'll explain the difference um, in a second. Sometimes we have kind of a centered column. Sometimes we have this FAQ, which has this interaction to open and close. So basically I've spent like five hours when I just got started building the website just to build this comprehensive page. It has this pricing boxes, it has testimonials. And once I've built that, Basically, this is all types of content that are possible. And you'll see that later on when I have here a course page, um, basically I am reusing those components over and over again. So basically everything that you see here is basically a component that I've already created on the style guide with sometimes I'm adding a little bit of you know, a little bit something that is unique like this component, but most of the other components are basically copy pasted from the style guide. So working on the style guide beforehand and making sure that it looks good really made my process that much more easy um, to do. So this is, again, as I said, it's a rather comprehensive style guide. Usually it contains just the typography and colors and buttons, but here it also contained a lot of 
layout elements. So the reason that I sometimes, I wanna explain, sometimes I use Flexbox to create the columns and sometimes I use Grid. A grid is a really, really great way to create columns because you have a lot of um, flexibility to determine very easily the gutter between them and to restructure them in a much more complex ways. But sometimes when you're not sure how many um, how many elements you're going to have in the columns and sometimes you want columns to be centered if you have like five elements let's say here um, if i would create this in a grid um, those two columns here might just align to the left because it's just like a structured grid and if i'd like them have like the L layout of three columns and then two centered in the middle i have to use a flex box where I can just literally center the columns. And then if there's two of them instead of three, they'll be centered versus left aligned. Okay, let's talk about how I've cr created this grid layout that we have here. So as you can see, how can we have this on top of four columns and then on top of them, just two or three columns? So here's basically how I've managed to create that. So I started off with a section, and by the way, if you didn't watch the video on me explaining the way that I usually structure things in Webflow, it might be useful for you. I'll try to link it somewhere here. Basically, I start off with a section. Inside the section, I usually put some kind of a container, and that container makes sure that even if we're on a very wide screen, we're gonna have a maximum width of the main of the content. So we have the container. Inside the container, I've created the grid, but this grid, I made, I turned it into a position of absolute. And what that actually does is it means that it can take up the whole space of the container, but it's not like a physical element that pushes other elements within the container down. It's actually on a different level. All right, so I know it sounds might sound a little bit uh, weird if you're not familiar with the position absolute concept, but basically what it means, it's taking it out of the container itself, putting it on a different lay, uh, level. So basically there's at this point of the layout, there's nothing in it. So then I put in the actual layout div that I want. And in this case, I'm showing you, let's say I've put three columns um, and inside that layout div with three columns, I'm putting in the content. So actually the size of the, the size of the layout div and the size of the container itself is being determined by how much content I have. And the grid, the lines of the grid with the absolute position just fills up the, the space of that container based on how much space there is. Let me actually show you how this looks like in Webflow. It might be a little too theoretical at this point. So notice what we have here. So I have here this this is a section, let's say component section. Inside of it, we have my container, my contain, which is basically the container. Now here we have this grid lines, all right? So you see this is grid and on the right here, you can see that it's set to position absolute and it's basically set to full, which means it's taking up the whole place. Let me just re, uh, delete that. And then you can see the layout stays exactly the same, but we don't have the lines. On the other hand, if I would, for example, re, um, return this and release, this is the layout itself. So this is the flex columns wrapper. And this is what I called here in this presentation, the layout view. So this is basically um, a flex box that has all the columns inside of it. If we remove that, as you can see, uh, I remove that. Let me see if we remove only this flex box. As you can see, the grids are getting shorter because there's no content here. The content was in the flex or in this centered column. So if let's delete both of them. Now you see there's nothing here. There's just an empty container with the grid inside. So the grid is actually flexible. As I've mentioned, it takes up the space because it's set to full to the whole um, size of the container itself. So this is basically how it's structured. We have the layer of the size of the container is being determined by how much content there is. And we have a flat layer underneath it that is set to absolute. And I just made sure here that we put the uh, grid lines on a Z index. Z index is basically the layer 
which the, how high the layer is. And if a number is higher, the layer is higher. So Z index to one is kind of like the lowest, the, uh, the lowest uh, layer. And then everything that is on top of it, you can see that it's Z index 10. So this flex column is on top of it, just to make sure that the lines are beneath the this. If this would, let's just turn this into 20, just so you can see, now the lines are actually above. So making sure that this is Z index number one, making sure that the content is on top of the grid lines. So this is how I've created this rather advanced layout. Let's continue. So what else we have here? All right, so we have the page transition. So for this, actually Nelson from Webflow created a rather awesome tutorial that I actually used and learned how to do this trick with Webflow, but I wanna explain basically what's going on. So basically you have two pages, right? And you're clicking from one page, you have a button and you're clicking and you wanna to move to page number two, but with a fancy transition in, in between them. So what happens is that you set an interaction on this button um, and let's call this out interaction. So in this case, when you're when, in my website, when you're clicking that website, the whole grid comes up and covers the screen. Now, the problem is that usually when you click a button that goes into a different page, that, you know, you move into that different page immediately. And so even if you put this interaction on it, the interaction won't play because like, let's say it takes a second for the animation of the grids going up. Um, you're gonna move to the new page before you finish seeing that interaction. So you need to use a, a little bit of custom code, which Nelson provided, and you can just copy paste it that actually delays the click on certain buttons. So when you click, let's say the animation, the out animation is one second, you want to de uh, delay the movement to the next page with one second. So you put the script that delays the page move. And when you're entering the second page on page load, you do the in animation. Let me show you how this looks. So first of all, let's see it in the published website. If I would go here into a course, I'm having, I'm clicking on, let's say, learn Webflow. You see, we have the out animation. Now we move to the next page. Now we have in animation. So let me show you how this works within Webflow. So let's go here to the home page, and let's go here to this button. So this button has interaction on it, and you can see here it has on mouse click. It has page transition home out. And this transition, what it does is it plays this we have here um, and kind of an, a hidden uh, layers on top of everything that is called the intro loader. And when we click that, it basically triggers, let me see if I can trigger that. Okay, so it doesn't play because it's hidden, but let me open that. Okay, as you can see, it triggered this animation. So this animation is being triggered and as you can see, it takes about one second um, to play this animation. And so let me show you the actual custom code that we have here. So in the custom code we have here, so basically this is the custom code and what it says, it's basically something like this. When a certain button is clicked and this, this are the styles of the button that I wanna delay, um, you basically delay by this number of milliseconds before you go to the second. So every, all, all you have to do is put here the style of your button and here the amount of delay that you want. Now, when we're getting into the second page, um, let's say we go into the course page. So in the course page, we have on the page itself, a page load, page transition home in. And basically it has here this animation that is just playing. All right, for some reason it doesn't look very smooth, but yeah. And this, what, this is what happens when the page loads. So the animation seems seamless, but basically we have out animation, moving to a new page in animation, and that whole um, move seems rather seamless. And the result is pretty cool, as you can see for yourself. All right, so that was the page transition. So let's see what else we have here. All right, home animation. So a lot of people thought that this intro animation is pretty cool and it's fairly simple. So when we load this page, actually we have two things happening. So as you see, first we have this 
home this loading um, home transition because as we said when we're going to move from let's say a course page to the home page the same thing happens as we just explained so we need basically for every page we need the the transition in animation because every page will have a transition out and so to make it seamless so this page has a transition in but after that happens we also have the home hero fade in so let's trigger that so basically what happens here i've hidden all the elements on the hero section and first of all there's a little bit of delay so as you can see here let me see where it is so there's one second of delay because i know that the home in transition will take one second so i'm waiting for one second and after that one second what i'm doing is i'm animating in the um the pencil and all the other elements here and then i'm also triggering yeah so all the text now on top of that so this is basically just fade and transition but when that animation finishes to load we also have as you can see there's a mouse interaction here so when i move my mouth those elements kind of move in a 3d kind of way so here was a little bit of a tricky part because when you're animating there's kind of two things that try to move th uh, the elements on the screen on the same time first of all i've made them animate as you know animate in um with the transition that we just saw but on the other hand i'm also saying that if the mouse move move them so basically that could make the script kind of go crazy because I'm, he's not sure whether he should move them according to the mouse or according to the in transition that i've made so this can make things a little bit weird so actually what i had to do to make sure that the uh, computer browser is not going too crazy i've actually had to wrap things um so let me show you what's going on here so the home let's let's look at this fist for example so this fist has some kind of a div that wraps it and inside there is the image and the reason is is that one of them is getting the transition is at, is being animated with the um with the transition and the other one is being animated with the mouse interaction that way they can both be animated at the same time because it's not the same element and that's how we basically solve them they can be um two things can affect them because it's not the same single object that was a little bit of tricky um, until i realized what causes these problems and i've understand that i need to um, create basically two different uh, elements so that i can animate both of them at the same time all right one last thing that i want to show you here is that on this website we have here kind of an infinite scroll so we have student work and you can see here website that our students designed and this uh, carousel loops forever and it looks very very seamless and a lot of people asked how do you do that there's no component to do that but it's actually pretty simple to do so let me explain basically how that works basically here's how i set things up so we have the page and on it we have obviously some kind of a section then we have some kind of a wrapper for this whole student work that is very very wide it's actually wider than the whole screen and inside of it i put um all the works and of course to make sure that there's no horizontal scroll because this is too long this section which is let's say this is the dark gray rectangular here has an overflow hidden overflow hidden means that even if something goes outside of this section we're not going to scroll here because you don't want this horizontal scroll on your screen so basically what happens is i'm moving away i'm animating this div uh, to the left which makes makes it look like the works are moving but note here that i have the works are one two three four five six seven and then i have one two three four five again now the reason is that when we get to this point of one two three four five again i'm just going to jump back into the first um, works and keep animating and the rotation is simple so basically this is what happens right the animation is move to the left then jump back up without nobody 
ever notices because the, the movement is seamless, but the jump happens immediately and therefore you don't notice that this happens. So let me show you how this actually works. So we have here the home student gallery. And as you can see, the home student gallery is actually width. It has a width of 5,000 pixels so that it's really, really, really wide. And then we have all the students work here. Um, I can't scroll to the left because we have on this section, we have overflow hidden. So I can't actually scroll there. So this is it. And we have here, um, on, when the page loads, we start an animation, which is home student work carousel, which is looping, right? And what happens here is we're just moving this home student gallery wrapper. We're moving it for 45 seconds. We're moving it 3000 pixels to the left. So it moves. And when it finishes, we're, we're just jumping straight into zero point with zero duration. So that happens immediately. And as I've mentioned, the result is that we have the whole page moving, the whole uh, section moving, and then jumping back to the start. And you don't notice it because you have the first few words repeating themselves at the end. So the end result is very seamless. What I like about the Webflow interactions is that even though you don't have all the components for every possible interaction is ready made out of the box, if you're creative about how the interactions work, you can literally create anything you want with just a little bit of creativity. All right. So I hope that's, um, that kind of covers some of the things that we did with this new website, which is I think turned out really, really cool. I've also published this here on the Webflow Showcase, and I'll put the links to this below this video as well. So if you want to open up this website with Webflow, play around with it a little bit, see how I've built things. And if you have any questions, you're welcome to put them in the comments below. That can be awesome. Remember, uh, tomorrow we have a live stream. I'll, I'll put the link to that in the description below. It's going to be really, really cool live stream. It's the last day tomorrow of the promotion of the new course, the $10,000 website process. So make sure that you take advantage of that and join us for the live stream tomorrow. It's going to be really, really awesome. See you there.